Hello everyone and welcome to the video lecture series of mobile application development. Students, today we are going to learn about the permissions in Android. You most probably know that whenever you try to install any application okay, from the Play Store or any legal application store, what happens? Your application is asking for some amount of permissions. Maybe during the installation time, maybe during the run time or while it is trying to access your data. Right. So it is very much important to know that how we can make an application with the perfect flow of the permissions in Android. Because maybe if you do not follow some steps or I can say some valid steps to ask for the permission in your application then it might be the possibility of the rejection of your app hi everyone once again this is your instructor janice shah so let's begin to understand the why the permissions are very much important in the android how can we give the various types of permissions in android okay so students the app permission helps support user privacy and the protecting the access many times uh, it is possible that if you want uh, an application that can access your phone and gallery okay good you are using a, a, an application uh, through which you can make the collage of your images so it should ask you for the permission of the gallery photos and videos that is okay but what if that application asking you for the permission of audio okay that means contacts okay so let me know is the permission of the contacts and the audio is necessary yes or no just think twice okay no never the application purpose is just to grab the permission of gallery but not the contacts and the audio files so it might be possible that your app get rejected from the server or i can say they're from the play store so here the app permissions helps user to support the privacy and protect the access to the restricted data or i can say the restricted actions such as the connecting to the pad devices recording audio sharing the videos allowing to get the access of your contact information and a lot so what are the types of the permissions usually we can divide our types of permission into two different parts one is install time permission and second one is a run time permissions so installation time permission give your app limited access to the restricted data and they allow your application to perform some restricted actions that can minimal affect the privacy of the user next the runtime permissions so here students the runtime permission also known as the dangerous permission it gives you an application to access the restricted data as well as allow your app to perform some restricted actions on your devices that may affect one or more than application situated in the smartphone so what will be the workflow for the runtime permission see it is very much necessary to understand this workflow because whenever you try to develop an application that asking for the runtime permission you have to work like this only so how let me show you see the so number one the first is declare the permission in your apps manifest file Usually students, we know that a manifest file is a heart of your Android project. So whatever the type of permission you want, you just need to write down in your app manifest file. Number two is design your app UI in such a way that is a self-explanatory of your application permission. That means you might write like this that on click asking for the camera permission. When you click on that button, it might be reflected some you like a pop-up or something else that shows you that why you need a permission or whatever permission you want 
from the user. Number three, after asking for the permission, wait for the user to request a specific action. Number four, if user allows the permission, if user click on yes, then there is no any issue. You can directly access the user's data. But what if the user says no? I do not want to allow the permissions, whatever you want. That means what happens if user click denies on button? See students, if user click on deny, then you may show the pop-up menu to the user in the next time that that pop-up menu or that thing is known as a rational. See, here show a rational, that means rational is one type of thing in which you can bind the purpose of the permission and the title of the permission, both of them. So, here you need to ask a user that why you need the permission. You need to tell them, you need to inform them the purpose of the permission okay so that purpose you can tell inside the rational so explain the user that why your app needs such permissions next request the permission to show the system dialog that means after that if you click on again on that same button then you can request for the permission again now if user says yes then just move towards the next step that means allow user to get the data or i can say allow developer to get the data and then if again user says no then you should grant the permission that means you should gracefully degrade your apps application either you can go with the grant permission or you can go with gracefully degrade the permission that means just come out from the asking the again and again again and again please never hesitate hesitate any user to, by asking permission again and again so this is the workflow we are going to same workflow in our next video tutorial but today we are going to just learn about that how can we define the permissions so in the very first example students we are going to develop a ui that contains two different buttons one button is used to ask the permission for the storage a second button is used to ask for the permission for the camera so here you need to define the both permission inside the manifest file then on the click event of the camera this permission occurs that means asking permission facility occurs and on the click of the storage permission user should allow a deny for the storage permission if somehow user allows for the both of them, then the permission granted toast message should pop up in your smartphone devices. Fine. So this is all about today's uh, practical aim. Now let's see that how can we implement the live programming lecture. So students, this is the practical for the permissions in Android. So what I want to do over here, see, as I have told you that we are going to make a activity underscore main file which contains two different buttons buttons with the get camera permission and get storage permission over here so here the when you click on the get camera per permission it will ask you to give the permission for the camera and when we click on the get storage permission it will ask you to give the permission for the storage purposes or i can say the external storage purpose so in the main activity.xml file what I did, I just take two different buttons, nothing else. So two buttons are there. See, two buttons are there. The text is get camera permission. Here the text is get storage permission. ID is a storage button. Here the ID is a camera button. So now what I'm going to do is students, let me first just open up my manifest file and give two different permissions. How to get the permission? You just need to write like this, like use this and permission. And then it will write like you want to read or write something. Okay. So this is how soon as you can give the permission to the user. Here we just want to read something from the external storage. That's why we give the permission like read underscore external storage. Okay. And this is my permission for the camera. So I already defined the permissions in my manifest.xml file. So, so now this is the both of the permissions are already given. Now what I want to do, I just want to check. The application uh, main activity dot java. So what I can see first, we just need to define the both buttons I already defined. 
then map both button over here okay then i just uh, created two integer variables one is camera permission code and one is storage permission these values are not by default you can give any two values because whenever you click on something we are going to match the camera permission whether it is even or not that's why i have assigned the camera permission code is one by two and storage permission code is one by three if you want to write like four or five hundred minus zero one this is not an issue now when we click on the camera start set on click button first we need to go to check the permission where the permission is written like many ways for the permission or the camera permission and go check the particular code so check permission is our function which is going to check whether the permission is given or not fine so now let me open up the check permission function same like in the storage button i have also written the same thing I just uh, pass the parameter as a manifest or permission for free extra storage and pass the code for storage permission code. Student, always remember this the check permission function is made by me. That means it's a default function. No, it's not a default function. Okay. So this is a check permission function. This function uh, should be outside the on create method. Okay. So we are going to make a function check permission. Okay, this for check permission function contains. Wait a minute. To give. Okay, wait a minute. Let's start. So this check permission contains two parameters. What three parameters? So this. Sorry, two parameters. Number one is a string permission, and number two is a request code. If context dot compact check self permission. Students, so this context compact is a by default class. Check permission is a default method, which is going to check whether the package manager has permission granted or denied. See, if this permission is already denied, then it will ask you for the permission again. So this is the main code to get to approve or for the permission. The code is activity compact dot request permission permission for main activity dot this. Like new string or permission. This permission is a particular permission when the object, sorry, the parameter that you have passed. If the parameter is for the camera, then this permission contains the value for the camera. So it will ask you for the camera permission. And this is the requested code. That means the code which I have you passed over here. So the first time when you click on a camera, okay, it will check for the permission. It will go inside. See, the first time we didn't give any permission. The my default is a denied. So it will go inside the activity or compact and it will give you the pop up menu that it's a, you, I want permission to access your camera. Then, if you allow it, then this requested code is set to for the permission. Fine. If it is not, then if it is already allowed, then it shows the permission is already granted. Now, you need to override a method which is known as on request permission results. See, whenever you allow or deny, it will call a function which is known as on request permission result. You just need to override this method. It will have the values like request code, permission, and grant results error. So, you need to first need to check whether the request code is equal to the camera permission code. That means if you deny it for the camera, if you allow for the camera, then the grant result length is greater than zero. That means if you allow it, then the grant result array has greater than zero value and length is greater than zero and the grant result on the zero we found permission is granted. Fine. If permission is granted, then the camera button value is changed from get permission to permission is granted. I can say permission granted for camera and here it will show the toast messages else it will show the first message the permission is not granted same like that if the request code is for the storage permission students then you need to check if the permission is allowed then the length is zero and the package manager is permission granted then permission is granted for storage so storage manager the storage button text is changed and get to the set to the permissions that for storage else 
if those message is shown that permission is not granted fine so this is how the code is written so now let's run the program and check the output and how it will look like so students now my application is getting installed so just wait for a minute so students the finally application is gone successfully so here what we have we have we want some get camera permission and get storage permission from the user so when i click on the get button let me just click on the get camera permission it is asking see allow permission to take the picture let me just keep on the deny or only this time okay or while using app so let me just click on the only this time so permission is granted for the this time only now click on the storage permission it asking you for the allow the application so let me just click on the allow button okay so it's allowing button so storage permission is granted now let me just close this application okay clear all the memory from the application and then click on run the application again okay see it is asking you for the get camera permission so when i click on the get camera permission while using this app because permission is granted it shows me the permission is granted when i click on the get student permission but permission is already granted fine so this is how you can uh, give the permission to the user okay once you want to check the deny is working or not so you, for that you just need to uninstall the application okay so let me just run this application again first uninstall the app okay so let me just run this application again so when you ask for the wait a minute it is just showing the toast message of the previous click the events so when i click on the get camera camera permission camera permission is already granted so let me just uh, uninstall the app and show you to how, how it works so uninstall the application now click on the run it again so it will take some amount of time to install the app okay so in the application is successfully installed now get camera permission let me just click on the deny so camera permission is not granted so it shows you and deny again camera permission is not granted so now let me just close this particular app and run it again when i ask for the permission it is again pop up the message okay so only this time ask for the permission it will again pop up the message allow for the storage permission is granted okay so this is how the permission works in the android in the next session uh, we'll talk about that how we can implement the alert text box okay or i can say alert dialog box okay so that's it for the permission students in this session we talk about that how can we get the permission for the camera and the storage the next tutorial we'll see that if you deny to give the permission then what happens okay till then if you have any doubt in the permission then please feel free to ask thank you so much